Hello everyone and welcome back to Brackets Academy. In this video, we'll take a look at implementing a 3.5 inch display that connects through the GPIO ports with the Raspberry Pi. The main catch here will be the high FPS, since most of the drivers out there when used with RetroPie or gaming on the Raspberry Pi lack high frame rate and high FPS. The display I use it is a 320 by 480 resolution and it is a copy of the WaveShare 3.5 inch display. In this video I will show you how to go from this to this and then to this. So if you're interested in gaining performance of your display or a higher FPS, then stay tuned. So let's start with RetroPie. RetroPie is the most popular emulator for Raspberry Pi. It is built on top of Raspbian, Emulation Station, RetroArch and many other projects and this allows you to turn your Raspberry Pi into a retro gaming machine. In this video we will focus on optimizing the display for high refresh rate and high frame rate. When I started this gaming project I did not expect games to run this bad. As you can see in this video the FPS is very bad, it is like one image per second. Now, as stated before, the LCD I have it is a clone of the WaveShare 3.5 inch LCD, which means that it can use the same drivers as the WaveShare display. But as you can see, games are unplayable. So I started to mess around with the settings and inside the configuration file, which you can access by sudo nano boot config.txt. Here I changed some settings and set the rotation of the screen so that the power socket does not interfere when I record this video. I managed to get the games to a somewhat playable state editing the configuration file that made the games run a lot better. Now on the left side I have the WaveShare drivers installed without any configuration except the rotation of the screen and on the right side I have the same drivers with additional configuration. As you can see there is a big improvement but I was not satisfied with this so I went to search onward. Then I came across project FBCP ILI 9341. This is a blazing fast Raspberry Pi display driver. The driver's main goal is to produce high frame rates over an SPA bus. In short, the way this works is by something they call adaptive display stream updates. And basically, adaptive display stream updates boils down to the fact that instead of uploading each pixel at each display refresh cycle, only the actual changed pixels on the screen are submitted to the display. This is doable because the ILI9341 controller, this is basically an LCD controller, as many other popular controllers have communication interface functions that allow specifying partial screen updates. So for example, if we have a game with a bunch of UI elements, most of the time there is no need to update those pixels, hence lowering percentage of screen pixels that need to change every random frame. Now that we understand the basics of this driver, let's see how it performs when we implement it with our Raspberry Pi. Since there are plenty of how-tos online for installing RetroPie, I'll try and make this as short as possible. First we need to head over to the RetroPie site and download the OS from there. After we downloaded the OS, we'll need an SD card that has to be formatted. In my case, I'm using the SD card formatter for Mac. Next, we can open the terminal and list our drives with the help of the command diskutil list. Here, we need to find out what our SD card drive is, and as you can see in my case, it's dev slash disk2. Now from here, we can run diskutil, unmount disk, and then the name of our drive, in my case, dev slash disk2. After successful unmount, we run the last command, sudo ddbs equals 1m if equals and then the path of your RetroPie image file. If you're on a Mac, you can just drag and drop the file in the terminal and it will output the path. Then just hit enter and you wait. If you want to know how the process is doing, you can press Ctrl plus T, not to be confused with the command on Mac, then you will see an output with more information. After successful installation, it is time to load the SD card into our Pi and we can continue on from there. I have installed the RetroPie and now it is time to make some settings. After our first boot up, we need to configure our controller. I have one of those Nintendo knockoff controllers. Next, I will enable the SSH so we can access the Pi from other computers within our network. And lastly, we will enable the Wi-Fi and connect to our Wi-Fi network. We will need this to transfer some games and ROMs to our Pi and obviously the SSH access. So to get SSH access to our Pi, first we need to know the IP address of the Pi. One option is to go into your router settings and see the connected devices and find the IP address in that way. The name should be Raspberry Pi. Or the easier method is to go into our RetroPie and go to the menu that says show my IP. 
Now that we have the IP address, we can go ahead and open the terminal on a Mac computer. And if you're on Windows, you can take a look at PuTTY. Next, we can go ahead and type sshpy at 192.168.1.144 since that is my IP address of my Pi and the default password is Raspberry and the user is Pi. Now that we have access to the Pi, let's move on to the driver installation part. In this part, first we need to install CMake. If we haven't already, uh, you can go ahead and run sudo apt-get install CMake. Next we can clone the repository by running git clone and then the URL of the repository. Then we can cd into the downloaded folder, so cd fbcp ili9341. And here we'll make a new directory, you can call this anything you like. This will basically be the directory where we will build the driver with the settings we provide so that later on if you want to make some changes we can just remove this folder and create a new build. So go ahead and run mkdir build and cd into that directory with cd build and then we need to run the cmake command. So cmake dash dspi underscore bus underscore clock underscore divisor equals 20. This option takes an even number and sets the clock divisor number which alongside with the pi core frequency which you can find in the options in boot config.txt file specifies the speed that the display SPI communication bus is driven at. So basically you might need to experiment with this value. If your display shows corrupt output or doesn't work at all, you can try a larger value if the display shows corrupt output or a smaller value to get higher bandwidth. So for me I find that 20 works best, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Then we can add dash d wave share 35b underscore ili 9486 equals on this flag basically targets the wave share 3.5 inch displays for you if you have a different display you can check the link in the description to this repository and read about the other options you can have the repository is very well written so you should have no trouble finding your way around the documentation after that we can add two dots this gives reference to the folder that contains the current folder and basically we are telling cmake the build will be here but the build tools are one folder up above. Then we can run make-j and next we can just run and test if the display will work. So go ahead and run sudo dot slash fbcp dash ili9341. After this you should see that the display works, but if your display does not work, then you can first make sure that there is no other fbcp driver running on your Pi. If so, you can kill that with sudo pkill fbcp to kill that process. But if you're sure that you have no other fbcp driver running, then you need to remove the build folder and start the build again with a different DSPI bus clock divisor value. So again, after you remove the build folder, again mkdir build cd into that then run the cmake command again and so on until you get the final result now once you get your display working you'll want to tell the pi that on startup you want to run this driver unless you want to cd into this directory and run it manually all the time so to do that you can go ahead and run sudo nano slash etc slash rc dot local and then you'll need to add this line in the end of the file sudo and then the path of the build of the driver in my case is sudo home pi fbcp ili 9341 build fbcp ili 9341 and then you need to add this and symbol at the end and that's it you're pretty much set now you can just reboot and enjoy all right guys since we're coming up at the end of this video i would also like to share another 3.5 inch display but this one is an hdmi version it is called kedei hdmi display with touch for raspberry pi so i'll share a bit of gameplay with this display and obviously since it is an hdmi games run perfectly so i'll make a little comparison here on the left side we have the HDMI display and on the right side we have the WaveShare knockoff GPIO display. And obviously as you can see the HDMI display runs very smooth and it is the clear winner if you are making a portable gaming Pi machine. Also I would like to mention here that the purplish colors or the purple bars you see on the screen do not show in person, it is most likely because of the way I recorded the footage. All in all this was a fun little side project to try and I hope it gave you some ideas if you were interested in getting this working. Anyway, in my opinion, if you want to use the Pi as a portable gaming machine, you can of course do that with a 3.5 inch display, but I would honestly opt for something bigger, like for example a 7 inch HDMI display. So that's it guys, I hope you found this video interesting and hope you liked it. If you have any suggestions of what you want to see next, please share in the comments. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.